Thank you for checking out this mother clucking podcast. I'm your host, D to the E, the A to the N, Dean Austin. On my episode today, I have a community activist, a speaker, poet, Fidel Ninchambo. Yeah, look who I have in the house, my man. Oh, man. Thank you for Yo. coming, man. Thank you for coming out. My man, I'm gonna say the name right. I want to say it right That's so right. everybody can say it right. You Fidel right. Shumbo. <laughs> no, yeah, the beginning. Okay, Fidel, say the last no. name. In Shumbo. In Shumbo. In you, gotta Shumbo. you gotta pronounce the N slightly. Okay, all right. All right, got in you. Shumbo. I was I, I tried, I thought the N was silent, but it ain't that <laughs> silent. It's, it's pretty loud. <laughs> yep, it's in there, but slightly. It's pretty loud. Yeah, That's good, brother. Well, I'm going to say it again. Uh, on my show, I have my man, Fidel Ninchambo. Perfect. He's That's here right. in the house from all the way from, from Congo. Yep. By way of Boise. He's in Boise, Idaho. Well, outside of Boise, Idaho, but Idaho. Yep. That's around Boise, yep. Boise, man. So we met back in the day, man. I was doing a show up there. Yeah, it's been a while. A couple of years, almost 10 years. A yeah. Late. Something like that, brother. It's been a yeah. minute. It's been a minute, but it's good to see you. You're yeah. a poet, a community yeah. activist, a speaker, yeah. tap dancer, yeah, fire fighter, yeah. elephant sure. tamer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you do it all, man. All I've been hitting that man. Yeah, you gotta keep busy. <laughs> That's what I love about you, man. You, you. So, so let me let me get a little back. So I was performing there, and you were working at the yeah. location I was performing at. Yeah. And we became friends that way. And it was a beautiful meeting. And we stepped, stayed in touch this whole time. All the time, for sure. All and I've time. seen you, you make progress in your life with, with family yeah. and kids and, mm -hmm. and, and doing things that's positive for your community, your people, for our sure. people, our people. And, 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 and Boise or Idaho, just yeah. Idaho, period. But Idaho period. completely. Actually, I've been, I've been went as far as the whole United States. So I started working with the national agencies out of DC uh, for at least six, yeah, ten, almost 10, 12 years. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice, oh, nice. At the nation and stuff. It's been a while. When we met, like back then when we met, I was actually single, I think. I was still single. Yes, yes. Uh, I was young, single, <laughs> trying to find my feet in a, uh, you know, in the country, in a new country, in a new city. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, now I have big family, seven children, a wife. Seven brother, yeah. Uh, been involved. I, I seen, I've seen, I've seen three or four on Instagram, on Facebook. I mean, but the other three must be in the closet. <laughs> well, because because it's, it's, there is an age, there is a certain urge. As, as soon as they hit a certain age, they don't want to hang out with daddy anymore. You ain't cool anymore. Oh, so, you ain't cool no more. Yeah, yeah so like, I'm, I'm out. A 15 I'm year out. old now. She, she only for the goes food. To, go to a Thanks for the food. Thanks for the yeah. shelter. We ain't thing. friends no more. Yep, and the, and the thirteen year olds the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there That's is a true. seven. There is a seven year old going to eight, and then from there on those six, I actually hang out with them still, and I'm trying to maximize the time with them because I know as soon as they go on the other side of teenagers, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how how was it? How have you been embraced in Idaho when you came with the uh, as far as? When you moved, first moved there, how were you embraced? Oh, man, it was a scary place, man. It was uh, actually when I left on my way to Idaho, on my way to the, you know, to the United States, I was over, you know, over to the moon. I was excited. I was happy. I know I was coming to the U.S. All the struggles of, you know, finding my feet in Africa is over. I'm going to the U.S. So I'm excited. I got on the plane and um in my situation, the way we came here is not like a visitor, you know, visiting visa or tourist visa or whatever. So I have a package from the uh, IOM, which is an agency that the UN use to bring people over. They gave me a package and that package is like my passport. So I meet people in airport and they move me through different planes to bring me here. And uh, into the package, there is every document I need to tell me where I'm going. So once I got on the plane, opened the package, and he said I was going to Boise, Idaho. <laughs> That's all I knew. I didn't know what the ID stood for. It's just a Boise ID. Right. So, <laughs> I've never right. You know it. what it was. You know what? I, I've it, never it, heard of it. You know, you heard you heard of California, or you, you heard of California, you heard of New York, Texas, Vegas, Texas, yeah. Idaho. 
ID, phone, oh, ID. What's that? Right, <laughs> so they're right. open it up. Look, some few people <laughs> like, why, why do they send me to Boise where they need identification? What's ID for? ID. <laughs> <laughs> this is Boise said, identification. <laughs> And and probably I was saying Boise wrong too. I didn't know how to pronounce it. I'm no. like, what Boise, Boise? I don't know what it is. So I was yeah, coming. You, you thinking no boys? Boys? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's an so, I in there. There's an I in there. Oh, boys. So I know. So it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. I got, uh, the plane. The first flight was going to UK. So I landed in London, and I'm curious now. I want to know where I'm going. I, I know I'm going to America, but where's Boise ID? Right. So, some few people in London, nobody knew where the place was. So we got on a plane to New York, talked to a lot of folks on the plane to New York. Nobody had a clue. Nobody? So landed, yeah, nobody knew I was going That's the whole flight to New York. I got to New York. I'm asking people in the airport. Some folks told me, no, 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 probably somewhere around the corner. Probably you get a bus out here. It's in New York, some small small town in New York. So I'm like, oh, shoot. Okay, I'm well away here. So we slept in New York for one night. Or at a hotel, so I'm waiting for the bus in the morning to kind of bus me to Boise ID. They took me back to the airport. The next day, I'm like, but another flight? Oh yeah, you still have a few more flights. Okay, so a, big, a lady was sitting next to me. This big, beautiful, healthy white lady was sitting next to me, <laughs> really nice person, laughing and want to know my where. Where are you coming from? We, oh no, I'm from Africa. I'm coming from Zimbabwe. I was in the Congo. Like wow, that's awesome. Where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to buy CID. ID. Yeah, she looked at me like, no, I've never heard of it. I'm like, wow. look here, I got papers. I put my paperwork out, gave it to her. She opened them up, look at the paper. She looked at me, she's like, boy, <laughs> you will die over there. <laughs> she said, you Man. will die over there. <laughs> I, no, I'm frightened. I'm coming from Africa. There, I hate to come <laughs> You know what, brother? When I met you, when I met you there, I looked. Uh -huh. I looked at you like, "What are you doing here?" That's what I looked at. I'm like, "What? What are you doing here?" I was doing a show. I was look. I was coming and going. As a matter of fact, yeah, I, I, I did a joke. I used to do a joke on the road, and especially predominantly all white, redneck, yeah. where the KKK, whatever you want, wherever they hang right. out. I was. I was in every location, right? Mm. the bikers the whole nine and i would do this joke about how white kids would look at me like they were they was they were at a zoo <laughs> exactly. they'd be like mama look at it he's, he's, he's passing by <laughs> yeah look at it. fingers yeah and I, would, I would i would do something like <laughs> so, so you had a sense of humor then you had a sense of humor <laughs> <laughs> right man so you came by yourself well yeah no landing up there by myself uh no the lady freaked me out she actually told me that you know if they don't kill you because you're black there won't be no black people there they make you black. <laughs> and then like no well, if they don't people. kill you if they don't kill you because you're black you may die from the winter the winter day is so cold <laughs> one of the two winter or blackness will kill you but she wanted me to go to texas she's like i'm from texas and i have a business if you land there, give me a call, send you a flight ticket. Oh, come. she wanted, she wanted, she wanted a chocolate drop to come to Texas. That's what she wanted. She said, I found me a brother that don't know nothing. <laughs> exactly. She actually told me, they had a, I'm like, wow, well, Texas, that's Texas, just like Africa. You're going to love Texas. It's just like Africa. Just, she the said that? I, no, yeah. she didn't say that. I'm Bro, like, she didn't say that. <laughs> it's just like Africa, Texas. She told me, it's just like Africa. I'm like, shoot, exciting. I'm going to Texas. So I came here scared Ooh. when I landed here first time. This was 2006. So there was, it was really still kind of different than now. But I'm, we landed, they picked me up from the airport and we're driving through the city. And I looked around and everything is quiet. Everything is clean. <laughs> no people on the sidewalk. <laughs> Buildings are all small, short. I'm like, this is the cleanest, the prettiest place I've ever seen. But where the people? Because I used right. to watch uh, back it, in Africa. Like, I used to it's like they watch. were hiding out, waiting for you to come. Exactly, brother. I, 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 that's exactly how I felt. Because I was in Africa, right? Back in Africa, we watch American movies, right? And I used to watch Bad Boys. Bad Boys with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. I watched uh -huh. that movie in South Africa. And, uh, and we know America on the, in the movie, busy streets. Everybody's passing around, shooting around, screaming and all. Then I'm coming at Boise, it's quiet. 
nobody on the street. I'm like, this is not America. No right. skyscrapers. I'm like, this is not America. Where the skyscrapers? Where the people on the street? It was scary, man. I was like, that woman was right. I'm getting out of this place. <laughs> it was very scary, but I made it though. I got there. Yeah. Uh, so you came. You didn't. You didn't come with your your parents or siblings. You just came. No, I was 22. I was wow. 22 when I came here. Uh, well, and I was young when I left home though. I left my parents back in in the Congo during the first and second Congo War. So I, I was 13. So the war separated us when I was 13. Oh, and I wow. found myself in another country and I struggled on my own in refugee camps and stuff. So I never mm. had parents until I found them when I was in my late 20s. So it was a tough life when I was young. From 13, I was on my own. So, so you actually found your biological parents. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I finally found them and I've worked so hard to get them to safety, but it was a tough life. So coming here, I was like, oh, no wonder when I met you, you ran up to me, gave me a hug and said, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, hey, man, I'm only about five like, years older than you, six years older than you. I'm not your daddy. <laughs> Maybe that's my daddy showing up there. Why my daddy on stage performing? <laughs> I didn't know my daddy was a comedian. <laughs> And he's like, perfect I, English. <laughs> I thought you were a dude from Zimbabwe, though. When I saw you, my first impression like another black man, he must be from some countries in Africa. Where? <laughs> Let me find out. Because that's what we got here. Brother, uh, black Americans never made it to Boise. So no. every time we walk, since then, man, since I came until now, if I'm walking down the street and I see a black man, we, we start playing a guessing game. Oh, you think it's Congo? No, you think it's Rwanda? <laughs> no, I think it's Zimbabwe. He can't be black American because they never made it. They only come here to to, 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 to BSU to play football. As soon as they right. graduate, they get the yes. they, they, they come get play, the, they go play football and they leave. And they leave. So when you see mm -hmm. a black man here, he's an African. So that's yeah, it's what, always a brother from, from yeah. Compton, LA, you know, from, from no. Oakland, from Detroit, somewhere. Go to Boise, Idaho, play football, get us his papers go to nfl whatever and leave leave they don't live here they don't own property they don't want to own property nothing yeah, nothing nothing so, <laughs> that's how tough it is <laughs> so they like put those so, africans over there they're, they're tough enough to take some of the racial stuff that happened over there <laughs> yeah 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 exactly when you're american you know you get you get racism out here as a black man you get used to it you know <laughs> that's true i used to i used to go to places where they yell out the n-word and i just wave hey <laughs> I say come to the show later tonight so we can talk about this. Let's talk about it, uh, I'm gonna educate you, I'm gonna make you laugh, and I'm gonna talk about you to you hurt me. You're gonna be that's mad how, at me, my, but you're gonna laugh. That's how we mature <laughs> that though. That's how we mature over the years since I arrived here. Man, it was tough. I actually had a few breakdowns because of those rest, you know, racism stuff that happened to me in early in my time when I got here. You know, my mm -hmm. first job that I got, it was tough. People were calling me on my work phone just to cast me out, you know, to cast me out and call me names and tell me to go back to my country. Right. Like, over the phone, some folks would just hear my accent and they'll say oh. I'm Mexican. I didn't know Mexican. <laughs> they said you was, wait a minute, hold on. When they heard your accent, accent and thought yeah. you were Mexican? Yeah, go back to Mexico. <laughs> oh, shoot, I'm not Mexican. <laughs> Man, they never You're like, I am not Mexican. They like go back to Mexico. Back to Mexico. That's just there. Yeah, like shoot. Go, yeah, yeah. go get one of them tacos and burritos and get out of here. You're right. <laughs> You're like, what you talking about? Yeah. Uh, I just got me a fajita the other day from Taco Bell. What you talking about? <laughs> Come on, she go get out. No. And, and my name also gave me up but over over time. I end up finding that my Fidel is actually also Mexican for Fidel is or something. So that's oh, yeah, yeah, it's Fidel Castro. Latino Mexican, Fidel. but you know, Latin. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh Fidel. shoot, my name wasn't helping. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't. No. And, and they could never, they could never pronounce your your last name because your yeah. last name to us the end is silent. Ah, uh, that's why. That's why I first. That's why you said it the way I said it. Yeah. As long as I've known you, I've always said it, tried to smooth it out with the, smooth that in out. I try to take yeah. the in out, you know, because I know you heard enough in words while you're out there. So I kind of like <laughs> the in out. <laughs> but I'm glad you 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 corrected me and I know how to pronounce it now. Right. And, and everyone should because it's a beautiful name. 
Yeah. Uh, now, does it, your 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 first name does it mean anything, or is it just family? Your family. No, uh, well, no. Well, apparently, Fidel means faithful. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, but uh, when I asked my father, how did he? You know, when? Why did you give me the name Fidel? He told me, well, there was a leader, if a, a leader of a country that was very ruthless. He Fidel was Castro. Ruthless and he never wanted to stop torturing people or whatever. But he, <laughs> ruthless but generous and fair. At the same time. He, him. Would, he, said he was ruthless, him. but he gave you candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a look, look. And he said, I'm going to treat my kids the same way. I'm going to be ruthless, but I'm going to show you love. Show you love. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and that apparently that it was. But then right, right. <laughs> now, this is a good question. So, you know, there's, this, this, I guess, rumors of people always say that people, Africans from Africa, when they come here, they don't, they're not treated well by black people mm. and Americans, Americans. I don't know. Was it so? I know you were the first one there and I was visiting during my show, yep, sure. but <laughs> but there were others that sprinkled in as time. Have they, have they treated you right? The other brothers? Yeah. So um, I know it's, it's slightly different. Because maybe compared to New York, because over the years I traveled to New York and other places, but I had all kind of turned slightly different that we all come here and we feel like we all don't belong. So we got to stick together. Right. So the black Americans and the African Americans, the African brothers who come over, that I still call them African Americans because they're right, the real. Right. Nah, you right. You're the black Americans. <laughs> right. Black Americans. You're the yeah. real African American and we the black African. American. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here we tend to stick together. A little more than people in big cities and New York and stuff and all of that, and I, I, I but I watch it for me. They treated me well. So my black, my black brothers, my black American brothers that are here, when they see me, well, it's a big warm hug and welcome, and we say hi to each other, even we don't know each other because we know you, it's gonna take a while before you see another one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's you know that's the real truth. It's just the two of you in a room for a week. Yeah, right, true. right. Yeah. So in the conference, you find yourself, you are two of you surrounded by different. So you right. gotta be nice to each other, regardless. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but I listen to my brothers from Togo, Nigeria, and stuff who live in other cities, and uh, they have that kind of feeling that maybe the the black American brothers don't treat them as fair, and then the white American the white Americans treat them good. But also, when uh, when I listened to them well, I had, there was a podcast that was organized by a brother in Africa who was in uh, in Ghana. He's a very good YouTuber in Ghana. He's very popular, millions of views. And he had the podcast where he brought the Black Americans and the African Americans from all over, and then some Black brothers from Europe together, hundreds of people to try to talk about this issue. But then I heard the stories of the, my Black brothers. So my black American brothers also feel like the African brothers when they exactly. get here, they kind exactly. of tend to lean toward white men because they think the white <laughs> men will give them stuff and treat them better oh, than yeah, them. Yeah. So they feel a little bit of jealousy and left out, so they lash out. So they never just had a chance to come together and talk the issues out, but this misunderstanding Correct. the communication. It's not like the communication is everything. It's not like communication is everything. They don't want to. Is like they feel like you are leaving them out and giving more attention to the to the, to the white brothers, right? And that's what was making the black, you know, the black brothers pull back a little. Yeah, so that's well, what I ended up finding. Well, during out. the early times, to colonialism and everything that happened, it was it was it was meant for us to be separated. So you 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 have this you have this 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 like line right down the middle that you don't you kind of straddle. You don't really know, yep. and that's where the confusion comes in. You know. Exactly. If exactly. you do not speak, open up and communicate and embrace another brother you see, that's that's your fault. That's uh, you, that's your fault. You have a problem, yep. a major problem. Yeah. You know, like, yep. you know, you were working there when I was performing and I went, we just, I just went up to you. We started talking and we connected <laughs> and we stayed in touch. Bottom line. Yep. I saw another brother, like you said, and we make a joke about it, you might not see another one for a while, but, <laughs> but it, it's, it, it, it was so few back then compared to now. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so exactly. we had to. We had we had each other's back. If something happened, I'm I'm there for you, and vice versa. I knew that. Yeah, you know? it's a mutual res responsibility. Yeah, right. You right. have to, to 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 come in together. Yeah. Because can you just, imagine you? And I go back to Africa now in a, in a helping you know capacity because now I travel back to Congo in a helping capacity where I, I mm -hmm. raise money here, go over there to help my people, and yeah. I was I'll, I'll go up there and I'm working with some white folks that I met over there. 
you know, who are working for me, who wants me to show them the place and come help me help my people. I'm the one leading the, 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 the crew. I'm the one making the final decision. So I'm the boss. But when I get to my people, they bypass me, grab the white <laughs> and them for, for favors. And then it takes a minute, the white man says, no, 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 he's the boss. Talk to him. I'm like, oh, sure. So, right. so that tendency of trying to bypass each other to turn, turn and run, and like you say, it's something that maybe was embedded in us from way back. Way the, back, right, right. That we start That's looking true. down to each other and think that the other race may be better than my brother. Right. Yet my brother may be the one who's giving the helping hand. So you we, know, you, we, you, yeah, it's got to step that up a little bit. You cannot have fear of your own people and have, and have fear of yourself. Right. When you fear your own people, you really are afraid of your own self and your family. And think about it, your, your parents, your siblings, everybody. You ha there's a, there's some, sometimes there's a jealousy there's a there's a, a a factor of oh well I don't want this person to, to take what I have or I don't want this person to get in a better position than me and that's right. where you start having that discrimination against each other mm -hmm. in a, in a in a really bad way when it comes right. to just being out and about seeing people and and you shouldn't be that way we should all I mean when I'm riding my bike or wherever I'm at perform whatever I do I always embrace my brother and sister no matter now what you, you know. Have because you never know. We we it's funny because you can be that way. Say I, if I was that way to you or you that was that way to me when we met. Think about this. What if we were related? <laughs> you know? Right. What if we were related? And we hang but on each other. Down the road, we had a wedding or something and like, "Oh shoot, that's your uncle out there." Your uncle. <laughs> Oh sure, that, that was really was my daddy. <laughs> my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, that's exactly the truth though that's exactly that's exactly true now yeah. what i what i do on my podcast is i do uh i do something called r key r q t time random question time so it's a random question i'm gonna ask you all right and you answer it and you tell me why okay all right all right uh -huh. so would you rather go on a tv show called naked and afraid mm-hmm and stay in the Brazilian jungle for 21 days, or would you rather climb down the face of a volcano? Oh shit! <laughs> and take photos and hang out in that area where they go down and hang out at the ridge. Which you, which one would you rather do, and why? Oh shit, man! <laughs> well, first of all, none of none of those two scenarios <laughs> involve a black man. But you got to choose. I, yes, you're right. Yeah. None of those for a black man. We understand that. Now I ain't going camping. You're not sending me in the forest for days. Butt naked out there. For mention in the middle. So, but, you, but if you had to choose one, but if you had to choose one, that I can never do. But uh, going to show and stay in the jungle for 21, 20 days. Twenty-one days in the Brazilian jungle. Neck in the okay. phrase. So, so basically you neck it out there in the elements, you gotta survive for 21 days. That's all, all right, I, I'm going, man. I'm going to volcano. <laughs> I'm going to volcano. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you was gonna say that because a brother don't yeah. want to be naked. <laughs> you know, I've lived down the for so long, man. I've been homeless in my whole life, you know, my whole <laughs> most part of my life. Yeah, I've lived in the in the desert, in the tents as a refugees in those camps. Right, they, right. Game park, so I ain't, I ain't going in another game park. I ain't going right. So park. that you were living naked and afraid. <laughs> I was. Living, I never told you the story, brother. I was in, when I was in uh, in Botswana. So uh, that's the that's my second refugee camp. I got to run to because I thought okay. it was. I got there. There were six thousand people. Uh, half of them were from uh, were bushmen from Caprive. They were naked folks. So I had to live with naked people. They they, they wore no clothes, nothing, nothing. nothing up there i'm like shoot one year i'm gonna be staring at this and, and you know what and you and what's funny is you walking around with a shirt on <laughs> they looked at me like i was the crazy one yeah, i was the crazy one I'm like, yeah they thought you was they said what's wrong with him he has on he has on pants and shoes what's going on with that guy right. and i had to play soccer with them though that was the hard part they, they they control all the soccer team so they recruited me on the soccer wait, team wait a minute wait a minute back up they played soccer that way <laughs> they played soccer bro come on now <laughs> <laughs> they, look, they put you on the soccer team. They said you're gonna be the goalie. <laughs> you had to squat down, get the ball. <laughs> that was a crazy. I remember every time I tell my kids a story, I just crack laughing. I'm like, sure, it was one year. 
no, but after four, after six months, though, everything started looking normal. So that's, that's you know, I was trip out to and just walk. It's, it's fine. We were only like twelve people in the authorities who were closed. So the rest of the people did it. So I'm like, what? You know, let's go. So you got you kind of got used to it. You're like, hey, I might as well take my shirt yeah. off. Yeah, after six months, it doesn't look everything. It's just skin. Huh? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Now I want to show I, I I I of course I follow your your career and your life since we've yeah. met and I'm I'm so proud of you and and you've you've done so well okay. amazing because 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 of where you come from and what you've been through and that you've actually been able to raise your kids and have a wife and a beautiful life here out here in uh in America true. there was a clip I saw you reading piece of your poetry on Facebook. Oh, okay. And All I would right. love to show that. Want me to show? I'm gonna show that if you don't mind. All right. I'm gonna, you know, because I think it's a beautiful piece, man. And, oh, thank and I'm you. gonna put it up here so that everybody can see it. This is uh, this is my man right here doing his poetry. Uh, it's called it "Takes Courage to Be a Refugee." And this is from the first book. I wrote a piece. It takes courage to be a refugee. Courage to endure. Courage to conquer. Courage to tolerate. Courage to accept. Courage to pursue, courage to achieve, courage to get adapted to a new land, courage to get used to a new culture, courage to learn a new language, and finally, courage to accept your status. Refugees, it takes courage to be a refugee. And I might add, it takes courage to move to Boise ID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it takes of courage. It. A whole lot of it. That's beautiful. I remember when you wrote that, man. That's a beautiful poem. I, I love it. it, brother. Thank you. That's yeah. coming from the heart, right? That's coming from that's coming from life experience. For sure, man. Yeah, that was a real thing. Yeah, that was. You didn't it. learn that from a book. You didn't watch a movie. You lived it. You, I lived it, and that's the thing. People usually talk about experts, and I, 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 used, to, I used to tell folks, and they said, "Like, yeah, you, you're bringing experts here." And I say, what what have you done? It's like, oh shoot, I, I got master degrees and PhD. I'm like, that, you're not an expert. Experts are people who have lived the life. Bring me people right. who experience things. They've gone through it, so they've learned. And yeah, so we are the real experts about these refugee struggles and wars and stuff because we've gone through those kind of things, you know. And not people who have just sitting behind the desk. They've, they've grown, went to Harvard and got their degrees. Then they go on TV. They've never hear bullets. In the neighborhood, that even once, right. and then never I say, I'm starved, never a refugee. Right. Have you ever slept in the jungle naked and afraid? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, the real naked and afraid, where real, you know you don't get out in 21 days. Naked and yeah. afraid, they pick you, you up yeah. and they take you home. <laughs> if you are lucky, you get out in 10 years. <laughs> if you're not lucky, you die there. <laughs> right, you can you tap out. You know what? I can't make it. I can't Call make. the producer to come get me. That's naked yeah. and afraid, right? That's you lived a life where you couldn't tap out. No man, I got, I had a few friends who tapped out though. Now this is this is a, a bad tap out. It's like, so one of my friends set himself up, set him, himself alight. He's he's from uh, from Somalia. He tried so hard. He stayed in a refugee camp for almost. So we found him there. Ten years later, he was still there. Almost 15, 16, 20 years. The dude was already tired and was worn out. One day he set himself alight. He just poured gasoline on himself, set, you know, throw set a match on fire. Set himself on fire and died. He was tired. So we had a lot of folks. Another folk, I'm a friend of mine, very smart. He spoke about 30 languages. So he lived in about 15, 20 refugee camps, keep looking for a better one. He got to South Africa, he threw himself on the bridge. So we had a lot of friends who kind of kind of killed themselves because they were tired of the struggle. So the life of a refugee is not easy. Only 1% of the people got the chance that I had to get out. So 99.9% .9 of the people, either they, they grow, marry, have children, and die in refugee camps, and generations continue in refugee camps. So I know people are left down there who are still in the same refugee camp today, and I've been here 16 years. So that yeah. is them, yeah. So their children have grown, married, and just grew up in those refugee camps. So it's, it's tough over there. Yeah, so people really- so these experts, the only thing they know about refugees is the, the group Fuji's. <laughs> we know the Fuji's. That's not a refugee. I'm sorry, sir. That's not a no. refugee. I don't know how likely have got here. They're but... doing pretty well in their life. <laughs> the Fuji's never slept in a hut. 
<laughs> and bounce from refugee camp to ref they just put fuji's in there okay <laughs> 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 but that's exactly true though that's really that's really wow, man so, so you have seven kids when i got seven kids uh, and the oldest is how old uh so she just turned 15 last week that's beautiful yeah and then then my last two is who is the only son out of seven is the last one the yep. baby Oh, we kept trying until we got that boy. <laughs> oh, y'all like shooting dice, huh? Ah, we gotta get him. Lucky six. Ah, lucky seven. Ah, four. <laughs> lucky seven. Ah, two. God. <laughs> <laughs> and he said one today. After today's his birthday. Yeah. Oh, nice. Happy birthday. Is today's birthday? Yeah, today he's two today. Tell him yeah. Uncle Dean. Tell him Uncle Dean from Los Angeles said happy birthday. I'll get that to him for sure. You know, I gotta come up there. I haven't been up there in so long, but I'm gonna come up there, man. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come visit for sure. Yeah, for you, I'm you come out there. Definitely do it, man. It's, it's, because it's I like I like your backyard. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> your backyard is a fun backyard. <laughs> <laughs> we well, Boise is getting different. That's why we end up getting up here because the whole city of Boise is completely different from when you well, California is. Sure, yeah, Trump was building it, wars. I want to build a wall around Idaho. Californians are invading. People are, <laughs> they are. yeah. They're coming they coming up there. They all come in here. We get more conservative <laughs> from California moving to Idaho with a pocket full of cash and buying houses cash. Left to and right. Three times the money. So the city is growing so fast. Buildings are popping up everywhere. In your backyard, people are building your houses around your court. You're like, oh, shit. You build home in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> you go you go to water your lawn, some dude jump out. Hey, man, can you close the door? <laughs> like, I'm watering my lawn. Close the door. Okay, I'm sorry, man. In my backyard now. <laughs> it's my backyard. Yeah, get the court. But that, you know, so it's really busy. Uh, we get, It's growing so fast. Uh, so we decided to move from Boise. Uh, to start to try to get more land and more space because everywhere around us was my brother up. yeah so we moved and get more i've land. never even heard of star <laughs> <laughs> but when you came when you came star was a little kind of uh, country village side small thing. tiny horses and, uh, horses and cows yeah but today well, when we moved here there was no elementary school no yeah we had to transfer to some to this big city uh no middle school so everything was not there so they had no fight. electricity you had to yep. have a stitching cord from from the other town all the way to star <laughs> yeah uh, had no no satellite one dude had satellite he was holding it oh uh, yeah right no seriously yeah. <laughs> oh we only have one that just showed up now we have no options but to go with this one guy because he's the only one who provides that thing oh you want to buy pizza Oh, you gotta drive 30 minutes out there because if you like dominoes, there ain't no dominoes in star. So it's really a tiny city. But the thing is, it gave us more land for our money, you know, because right. the, the price of houses and everything is tripling because of the Californians coming in numbers. And uh, yeah, so we had to move from our first house to get this, uh, this one up here to give the kids at least more space. Yeah, with seven That's kids. Beautiful, man. Yep. Yeah, you need space for seven kids. You can't put you can't put five in one room. It's not right. <laughs> Right. No, that, no, then, well, no, you don't say, but you, you may not. I would put them five in there. They didn't want me to your do kids. This. Your yeah, kids, like, Daddy, know. we don't want to grow up like you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, sure, what do you mean you need each one in your room? Come on, share your room with all of you. All the boys in here, that's it. No. Uh, okay, I guess I'm going to struggle and wake more. Get some more stuff to do to make money so I can get to something that you want. Right. But in, that's what we do though in africa i remember we're living in south africa in south africa i lived in a one bedroom so just a bedroom with one bed we were five <laughs> guys, one bed five guys so i went five guys. Five guys. i got in there my friend found me on the street he brought me home he said no come stay got there where he was living in south africa that was my first day my first time over there two weeks of being homeless he picked me off the street took me to there and said you're gonna stay with us Got up there, big argument. Three of the other dudes who live in the same little room say, no, we ain't, he's not coming in here. My brother, my, my brother said, no, I know this brother. He helped me in Zimbabwe. You gotta come. No, he, now I found that there were five of them, one bed, four of them. So two 
on this side, put the legs that side. The other two on this side, put the legs on that side. You gotta cross your legs in there so you can fit. Now I'm like, where do I sleep? So I, you know, we can be three on this side. And it's, like, it's not even a king size bed. It's like somewhere between queen and something. Right, right. So man, I lived with them for one year. Like that, man, four guys in there. It was, went a on queen, to it was a queen between a queen and a medium. Queen and a medium. It, it, right was, a, it was a it was a comedium. <laughs> <laughs> you had a comedium bed. A comedium bed. <laughs> a comedium. <laughs> With no comedians in there, but it was a comedium bed. <laughs> and we were living better. We were living better because our brothers from another city, from another city in the Congo, those guys were, were living eight of them in one little room. Eight. But, those, wow. but but after after a while though after a few uh, no a while the guys are gone how did they make up the money how did they come up with the money to actually fly to the us and be refugees over there the guys were saving all their money sleep all in another tiny room eight of them save all their money and just contribute to eat and to pay rent but they were pocketing everything yes so my brother from congo when i was down there buy timberland when we see the timberlands are coming out the boots they were like a hundred dollars over there. You work hard and you get your hundred dollars. You work hard to get some Timberlands. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I don't know if you know this. If, I don't know if these sneakers are still popular in America, but there were some sneakers that were popular over there. They called End One. Yes, yes, End One. You got the jerseys. Yes, yes. Yeah, over in South Africa, they were 150 bucks. You got to work so hard. Put them on layaway. Yeah, I don't know. You know, layaway. Pay a little bit over there until we paid it off to get it out. You know, you put the in jail for a little bit. <laughs> so, so if you got a pair of N ones, you was rich. Yeah. Everybody looked at you like, man, that that dude right there, baller. <laughs> that dude is N ones. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. There was some cat out there that had the cheap version. He had N twos. <laughs> there was someone <laughs> with a, with, a, with a magic marker. He put on the side of two N twos. <laughs> no. But that was but that was something different that we didn't have when I was in the Congo because then I you know I got here I'm like oh shoot South Africa is beautiful we got a chance because South Africa is kind of like here you know with a mixed uh, history of racism a mixed race with black, white folks staying over there so there's a little more opportunities than the Congo so when I got there we could we were exposed a little more to the American culture and all this new civilized stuff so I was able to do stuff like that so so it was in 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, 2001, uh, Ja just released Mother Inc. Yes, yes, Murder Inc. In South Africa. So everybody wanted to dress like Ja Rule. <laughs> 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 so, I, 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 let me see. I have some photos here. Look, uh, those are some of my photos in South Africa. <laughs> <Now I'm> not... <laughs> I got some end white on there. And the you, you look like an African adamant. <laughs> <laughs> African Tupac. I got stuff like this. You got some, some real <laughs> end white. Look there. at you. <laughs> it, it was tough. That oh. is funny, brother. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, now being exposed to the American culture, and that's when it started all that. And you're like, oh, shoot, those people live better than us. Why did they live in Congo and struggle and suffer like that? And, and you know, I want to be there. I want to be like those guys. Yeah. And you know, so, in, in, in South Africa, I met a young lady when I was on the road. I was in the Bahamas performing. Yeah. And I met a young lady, and she was, she was, she was mixed, black and white. All right. And she said, in South Africa, and I said, what national? No, I said, I think I said, where are you from? She said, South Africa. And she said, I'm colored. And I'm like, you can't say that. You can't Those. say colored. Not here. You get punched <laughs> in the eye for saying colored real fast. You know, you that's, that's an old word. That word is gone. Oh, colored. Oh. But in South Africa, that's what they call. That's what the, the mix. mix. Like we call them mix. We call them, you can, people call them a lot. You call them mix half breed. You can call them mulatto, but yeah. never colored. Oh, and she said that. colored. And I was like, Whoa, I said, you can't say that here, said, but that's what, what we call them in South Africa. Yeah, and they're, they're so this is my first. So, the first racism that I faced happened in South Africa, and it was the colored. Those guys are racist than the, the white, really. People. The black and oh, whites were racist, they're racist. Than white. <laughs> you know they're why? You know why? You know why? Yeah. They saw you looking like Ja Rule, right? Oh man, like, and they that, thought that, they thought, you know what, the white side came out. They start, oh, they start feeling privileged. Oh, the colored man in South Africa? No, they, they hate the whites. They, they, so white people see them, white people can say, you are racist. 
and like, oh yeah, get out of here. So white people hate them, black people hate them because they think they're special and better than everybody. So on the bus, we'll get on the bus, small bus, and they're, they're sitting there, you sit next to them, they tell you to move. And if you don't move, it's a fight or they move on the other side. They only, and they move in, uh, in clicks. So they have the little gangs that they go in, five of them, 10 of them, they don't mix with anybody. They okay, really so, so what if you, you, you mixed and you colored in South Africa, they call it colored, you mixed. And then they have somebody black, and then you have somebody that say, "Yo, I want to be in this gang or whatever." And they say, "No, you can't because you're not, you're not, you two got, you all black, and you ain't got enough white in you to be in this gang." And then, what's the person that's the albino? What would he be? Uh oh, yeah, he, he, he got to, he got to start his own gang. They're not happy now. Those are just everybody. I know it's funny, but those guys, even the black brothers, don't like them sometimes, and it's sad how they treat those guys over there. Oh yeah, yeah. And in, in the Congo, they actually treat them like like, like witches and stuff. Yeah, so you because are, they're afraid. They don't know. They're afraid of them. They don't know. And yeah. people are not educated, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's funny. I left the Congo back in the day. In the day, you know, cell phones and stuff were not there. So Facebooks and all. It's funny to know that they just came yesterday. So when I was there, I'm not that old. But it's funny to know that I, when I lived in the Congo, it was not the age of cell phones and uh, Facebooks and YouTubes and stuff. So people were not exposed to anything. So people in the Congo were afraid of these people who are really human, you know, really human right. beings. But they had they had no information or any way to get to be educated. So they were just ignorant, but not of their own fault, you know. Right. That's some yeah, some innocent, you know, uh, victims or you know criminals and so, But it, it's just that tough. But now I think hopefully now people have come to understand and learn. I hope that things have changed. I haven't lived in the Congo for longer than two weeks since I've been visiting. So maybe one day I'll go for longer and try to learn what has changed and what hasn't. And the but. beautiful thing about it, there's people like you making a difference. And I, I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah. You're doing a lot for your community up there and you, you're letting black folks. You were you're the you're the catalyst. You're the pioneer of black black people staying in Idaho. <laughs> uh, <definitely laughs> like you said, black people come and go. Football yeah. players come and go. But oh, you said, you know what? I'm staying, you know, I'm staying because they sent me here and it says Boise ID. So I got to get my ID. Get your ID there and fix it. Face yeah. it. I've gone to schools and stuff, educate people, new schools that didn't, had never had a black man before. I had to go to those schools and talk to them a week or a couple months before they get an influx of refugees into their schools, trying to tell these white kids that these people are like you, they're the same thing, you know. Don't talk to them this way or that way. So I had to be, you know, to kind of start the whole thing right. in different places here. And, and exchange uh, students. They have a lot of exchange students that travel in and out. Yeah. And, and for the exchange students to be able to see you that are black, yeah. be able to see you yeah. when they come is, is a wonderful thing. For because sure. They get to see, they get to see that, that you can thrive here and, and that their culture is being represented here in America. No, yeah, no, we, I tolerated a lot, and uh, yeah, after struggling, you know, I never told you that I actually had a mental uh, mental breakdown because of racism here. Man, oh, wow. and I, think I didn't have the backbone to take the, you know, the, the hate. So people tortured me with language and words and phone calls and abuses that I actually passed out, you know, mentally broke down and end up in the clinic for yeah for 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 a week, locked down in there, trying to find myself. Came out, went through counseling. None of that helped. It's it, and that's what uh, you know. In, kind of moved me into advocacy and sharing my story. And when yeah. I started sharing my story and trying to rally people around my story, and some most people responded, it kind of helped me heal from that hate and pain. But I have some brothers. I have a brother who actually just left this year because of racism. His name is Tekla. Yeah, uh, you can read about his story. He just published his first book. The brother was hurt so bad that he actually left America. He left the military. He left, he, he sold his house and everything and moved back to, to Ethiopia. And now he just talks crap about all the crap that he faced here. And he ran for office a few years ago. I hosted him in, in my house, a three fundraiser for him when he was running for city council. But the hatred and the pain and the words and the emails, attacks and everything, everything, it was so bad that he actually gave the whole country yes, yeah when i can see that i can see that happening you know it's not so, it's not easy it's not it's easy, not easy. what you what you did and what you're doing is not easy no it's the hardest thing you know i you know you should have went to texas no i'm, 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 I'm 
you know, it might have been a little bit better in Texas. Who knows? Texas has more of us there. I know that than Idaho, yeah. <laughs> especially at the time when I met you. <laughs> but it's not it's not easy. It's not an easy task. That's why I'm happy to have you on so that people can see this right. and the kids and 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 you know our culture, our people can understand that when you get in, when you come to America, it's not always all roses. No. Just because you're in America, you might think, "Oh, I'm flying in, and it's going to be the best ever." Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it depends on where you go. You know, yeah. where you, you go. Yeah. If you come to California, it'd been different. You come to New York, it'd been different. But yeah. you, they put you in. They put. They would. They they put you in Idaho, and that's different, yeah. bro. I'm. I, you know, I don't know how to explain no, it. I'll give yeah. you an example. I was performing. In, excuse me. I was driving up to Idaho from Northern California, doing. All right. You want to show this is before this is probably I was probably on my way to, to meet you. <laughs> that uh, so I was stopped in Oregon. I did uh Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Oh yeah. So you know, you go through Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. They say whatever you do, get your gas and don't stop. <laughs> Just go yeah. straight through. Yeah, so then my knows. girlfriend at the time, she she was doing research before Google, before mm -hmm. Google, she was online yeah. researching my travels. Oh, she just said, she, she said. Stop. She said, uh, baby, the KKK is out there. Were you performing? And I said, really? She said, yes. I said, well, I'm going to do my show and I'm leaving as soon as I do my show. And I hope somebody show up with sheets on because I'm going to talk about it. Right. <laughs> and she's like, you're crazy. You're crazy. But I, I had no I had no problems. Uh, the shows <laughs> were great. But in the back of my head, I thought, wow, this is this is this is pretty bad. This is pretty bad to know that this is America. This happens. Yeah. Yeah. And. Up there, there was there was probably okay. You were the first one in Boise or in Idaho, right? There was nobody in Coeur d'Alene at the time. You was in Boise, no, no bro. nobody. Because no. I came and I left, and I, I, and I did I, not, bro. I don't I, think I slept in the hotel. I did the show, I got paid, and I said peace. I saw Idaho in my rear Coeur d'Alene in my rearview mirror that same night. You got your full tank of gas if you are driving. Full tank. Don't stop anywhere. Just straight. Don't. Stop I would have rolled through on E. I wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't. The car would have been. I'd have. I'd have put my foot out and pushed the car. Push the car. <laughs> <laughs> Last week was if you, a few weeks ago. They actually arrested a bunch of them in, in that same area in the north of Idaho, uh, in a U-Haul truck trying to go to attack. A, a, it was a pride rally. So okay, a yeah, bunch yeah. of white supremacists got arrested. In, in I America. heard about so, that. They so got they're caught. trying to stick them, their foot up there, but uh, over the years, uh, uh, there's a little lot of people who are changing minds in Idaho, and we've worked so hard for that. And uh, okay. it's becoming a little better, especially if you live in the Boise area. It's more more people, free thinker, and more right. open-minded people who are not focused on one-sided kind of things. That are actually now working hard to try and make sure that we squash that kind of hate in Idaho. It's hard because nobody expands outside of the the big city like Boise and uh, the surrounding small city around Boise. So if you go north, good luck. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you go north, you must well go ahead and tell your family goodbye. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, don't yeah. go north. But Boise is becoming a little better for me uh, compared to. Uh, you, you don't face as much racism as I used to before. Back in the day when I was here, people would just drive by and, and, and end where you out oh, of the wind. Yeah, yeah. I've heard it. My wife came here to visit before we married. She lived, she lived in Minnesota. So I found her in Iowa, moved her, you know, she was in Minnesota, moved her here. First week she came to visit. So we were visiting the site. And these people just drove by, looked through the window and said, and just went. So... Uh. Right, sorry, that's that's what we get here. You, you'll be okay. I had to make sure. Right, right. You told her that's normal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what you what would you like to eat? <laughs> we, we do, with that. do you prefer pasta tonight? <laughs> Otherwise, she was gonna go back the same night. Like, no, she's like, I'm going back to Minnesota and I'm hanging out with Prince. I ain't coming back over here. This is ridiculous. <laughs> She I'm told hanging me, out with Prince and a revolution, not you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> today she she looked at me today. She's like, shoot, we're going to the DMV and we're the only black folks in the whole DMV, hundreds of people. And she's like, wow, Minnesota is so cool. In Minnesota, we, you, you, nobody cares you're African because everybody is black. You walk everywhere, it's black, black. But the Somalis are so many of them there. But you know, what, DM, you know what DMV stands for in Idaho? <laughs> Don't move. There's a villain.
Don't move. Don't move. There's a villain. It's a villain. DMV. <laughs> Don't move. We see a villain. No, yeah, that, uh, that is really true. True talk, man. Uh, but yeah, but we man. Make it here. I think I want to make it my home. I'm going to put my roots here. Do you your know, thing, I'll brother. Do you, relationships you, and friends. Look, nobody can run you out. You're a strong brother. Right. You've proved it. You've shown yeah. it. And you and you, you, your kids, I know they're proud of you, and they, you know, they're so happy they don't have to live 18 in the room. You know, that's a wonderful <laughs> thing. Know? They get look, they get to eat when they want to eat. <laughs> you get to yeah. get to have games and all kind of good stuff okay. that you didn't couldn't Never, even fathom having. So sure. they they they're blessed, and you keep sharing your blessings, man. And I, like I said, yeah. man, it's good. I'm I'm happy that you're giving back. I'm happy Thanks. that your family and everybody's well. And you're doing your thing and i'm proud of you man i had to get you on because our history and i thought about it because i saw you online on facebook and i thought to myself you know we've always stayed in touch yeah but I, I wanted to see you again so i'm seeing you now and i wanted to talk to you and connect with you and 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 i followed your 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 life and how the trajectory have went it's just been taken off it's just taken off everything has been yeah. so smooth but yeah. And when I say smooth, you've had your rough times. You had, like you said, you talking about the, yep. the 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 mental breakdown and the racism and this and that. But yeah, nobody but can keep you down. Just what success? Because we came here for the opportunity. So, right. but to understand that, I will take all of that to achieve the what brought me here. So coming right. here it was just the opportunity. You have work. I've never never had opportunity to work my whole life. I had peace. If I cannot keep it to myself, I can have peace in my life. You know, I can build the future. I can have generations here. I can have children of my own. Those things were never a sure thing as a refugee, you know. So coming here, I, that was my focus. But all these distractions keep coming in. And I used right. to tell a story about a metaphor uh, of how I survived racism here and how I collapsed, why I, I had a meltdown. It's usually like a, a child. When we are born, we are like we, everybody's born with a backpack. And every day of your life as you're going through trials and tribulations is that you pick up a rock and put that rock in the backpack and it gets heavier. And every as you go as a child, things happen to your parents, more rocks in there. And when you're a kid in America, you don't notice those rocks because your parents carry all of them for you. They just want you to be a kid. But for me in Africa, I had to carry that backpack since I was 13. Kid. My parents, uh -huh. heavier and heavier in Africa to survive. So coming to America, I thought, this is my chance. Finally, I'll be there. I'll take the backpack off and I'll live my life and be happy. But when I arrived here, the honeymoon period happened. But quickly, people made me re remember that trouble still here too. So the racism st st starts. When they started, more rocks went into the backpack. But my backpack was already saturated with too much from Africa. I couldn't take it anymore. It was too heavy for me. And that's why I had a mental breakdown. And I end up in the hospital and stuff and got to find a way to survive. But for me, that's the, the way that I look at it. So we have to find a way to empty the backpack so it doesn't weigh you down in mm. life. So through therapy and all those other stuff, I found a way to actually live with my backpack. So when people tell me that, oh, no, there's a lot of racism in Idaho. How are you staying there? Is it getting better? I said, no, it's not getting better, but I get accustomed. I get used to it. You know, I'm ad adapted to it. You adapted it to it. found me. I just find a way to dodge. You know, right. And like right. Said, you censor your mind into it, and then you educate. Right. You censor your mind, then you educate. And that's how you live through it. And, uh, you know, it gets a little easier. That's beautiful, brother. Man, that's, that's, that's the best way to look at it. And have you told that backpack story before? Yeah. Yep. I, yeah. I've told you a couple of times to the yeah. young kids. Good. Good. Speak schools. I speak to that's schools. That's a beautiful, beautiful Which story. You know, like I said, man, you are you're a testament of 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 true being a true king. Because, like I said, man, it's it's hard it's hard enough being a black man yeah. in the world, but it's it's worse being a black man where you're pretty much like one of the only black men. You know, that's that's yeah. pretty it's that's tough. pretty it's pretty taxing. So your backpack, like you said, gets heavy. You know, yeah. some people out here they don't they don't understand that because they 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 haven't traveled. They've never been in that situation. Yep. I fortunately have, was was born and raised in California, mm -hmm. but I've been blessed to be able to travel to all these different places, like where I met you in Idaho and different places where I've heard everything under the sun from a moving car while on stage. Holy and, and when it's when it's on stage, I handle it 
so smooth because I, I have the mic and I know that I can make people laugh and I can make I can make everyone turn on that one person with just holding the mic and, educate and make them realize that that's uncalled for and it's unnecessary here in this in this venue and they and they get have to leave and they end up getting thrown out or whatever. But I've had it all. So I understand what you're saying, but what you, what you, you did and what you're doing when you first came here is that you jumped in the pool and you were in the pool. You, you didn't get out. You never had to, you never got out the pool. No, you went from the ocean from where you lived and you jumped in the pool over here. And in that pool, you had some sharks still coming at you. Yeah. And that's hard. So you are definitely a shining example of what to your kids and to other people, other people in general are people, you know, that you can achieve whatever you want to achieve as long as you put your mind to it and work hard and stay focused and know that you love yourself and that you are important. And like this, like, like the, the, the movie where she says, uh, and the help you are strong, you are important. Like, you know, <laughs> when she said that little kid, you have to, you have to say that to yourself, you know, <laughs> my backpack is heavy. I'm going to take some rocks out. You know, you, you, you have to say that, you know, <laughs> Uh, but man, I, I I thank you so much for coming on, man. I got mad love for you. I've always have, man. Thank you. My, you, my, you know, I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. Uh, <laughs> I'm your daddy. Daddy, my daddy's my my daddy. I thought I left him in the in comedy. They call it a callback. <laughs> talk, but uh, for sure, man. I got to get up that way. Please tell your family, give your kids hugs and everything and tell them Uncle Dean said what's up. And also the brother that's over there with in, in Africa with YouTube, I would love to connect with him because I can see us having some good dialogue. So that's when true. you get a moment, you can just shoot me that info. Yep. And I can reach out to him because I that's wonderful, man, to connect like this really? and to be able to spread our wings and share our voices. Indeed. And that's what we're doing. And and the great thing about it is that I do it through comedy. You know, you do it through poetry, you do it through your activism, you do it through your experiences. And I do it through mine experiences through comedy with laughter, but we're on the same path as far as connecting yep. and bringing it out there. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Thank you a lot, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll meet again soon. <laughs>